How are you doing, dude? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing very well. I'm doing very well. Excited to be with you today. Yeah, we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, um, before we get into your short film and your production company you just launched with your wife, here at Bonic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. I want to know where your passion for filmmaking came from. Was it inspired by a certain role, performance, or something that was just naturally your feet as a child? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really great question. Honestly, I have loved the arts since I was a, a young kid. And I don't know if I could pinpoint exactly like the moment where I knew that I wanted to be a filmmaker, but I can remember as early as being in third grade, like acting in the mirror and just like acting out kind of random, you know, kind of like imaginary situations. I grew up as an only child. So um, there's a lot of time I spent by myself. And I think it's probably that and a combination of like watching Power Rangers like for hours and hours as a child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I probably wanted to act that out. And then I was like acting, music, film, like this is kind of where I want to be. So I think that's where the passion really started. Well, cool. So tell me about your journey. Like where, um, when did you come to LA? I mean, you were part of the Disney like um, writing crews. I think I remember reading. Yeah, yeah. I was a, I was a finalist. So um, oh, I finalist, almost yes. got, I got really close, but um, I moved to Los Angeles in 2007, and I kind of jokingly tell people I came to LA actually initially to become a musician. I studied classical guitar performance for undergrad, um, and like I, you know, tried to do like an 80s dance pop record, probably like I don't know about like seven years ago. And that's cool. Uh, I, can I hear that online? Is it available? Yeah, sure. yeah, I can. Uh, it's called Weirdo Wasteland. Yeah, you can look it up. It has no views, but. Um, I'll be the first. <laughs> yeah, indubitably. Thank you. But um, yeah, I mean, really what happened was, is I came to LA to make LA to make music. I finally put out a record. No one wanted to listen to it. And I only got paid probably like $450 in like the entirety of my time trying to be a musician for like 10 years. And that was to play um, backup guitar at a barbecue chicken festival in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So when I hit that low, I was like, you know what? I'd always wanted to like <laughs> explore like being a filmmaker. And so I um, started screenwriting, um, got really close with some programs. And after I almost got into Disney, um, I just kind of had this random thought like, oh, I think I need to direct my work because I think just like putting 27 pages in front of someone, 32 pages in front of someone isn't going to do it. Like they need to just like see what my voice sounds and feels like. Yeah. And like literally the next um, like week or something, Ghetto Film School had a grant out for our competition for short film. And I applied for that and I was lucky enough to be one of the, the finalists and uh, I got $5,000 in my first short. I mean, for those who don't know, the Disney writing program, it's its a big deal. So, I mean, I, I applied for it at one point. I originally came to LA, I live in Florida now, but mm. I wanted to be getting animation and then I kind of wanted filmmaking and then I kind of fell into media, which is the kind I went to school with to begin with. So. That's so funny. <laughs> um yeah. but well, so yeah and then you so you got this bit short film now called rude boys restaurant which is hilarious i feel like you must have been like experiences of yourself like being in la go, is there like a certain jamaica restaurant you've like gone to before yeah well i'm so i'm half jamaican so i've been going to jamaican restaurants my entire life my mother's jamaican and my dad's from ghana and um yeah there's a spot in la we jam and shouts out to we jam and like they're, they're one of the great places in LA that kind of hold it down for the culture. But um, yeah, I mean, the film really kind of came from uh, the experience of like going into West Hartford in, in Connecticut with my mother into like Jamaican restaurants and just uh, the tense nature of like trying to procure your food. It was, the, it was almost like kind of like the soup Nazis and Seinfeld, like that. Kind yeah, of I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, there's rules. You kind of got to respect it. If you step out of line, that's not good for you. The person up front, rules everything um you know this is kind of their little kingdom even like this like joke that you hear a lot of people say like uh, if you go to a jamaican restaurant they're like i oh, kind of get the oxtail it's like it's finished you know so it's like it's on the menu but it's like it's finished you can't have it well can i get the rice and peas it's finished can i get the goat it's finished and so what was kind of funny for me is like you know i'm i'm half jamaican my mother's jamaican but even you know watching her enter into the space with like this reverence same for me and then bringing my wife who's white into the space was just like it was like everything was just like kind of on fire and then watching her watch other white people in the space who might not be as like sensitive to it was like the thing that just stuck in my mind like this 
white v white tension in this black space you know so that was kind of the inspiration yeah like the one customer is like claiming to be like a cousin i think they're like sean paul or something like that. <laughs> yeah exactly i just i don't know i think uh if you if you look in the short film and um there's kind of this wall of like the greatest jamaicans and like on there are like actual like important people like bob marley and yeah. um also there's like the dude like from the, the cool runnings uh, cool running. uh cool. yeah so i was just playing with uh cultural touch points of where people kind of think of Jamaica and like Sean Paul mm -hmm. is like, you know, exactly one of them. Well, you mentioned your wife. Uh, so you two just launched a production company together and uh, she's like been a writer for other shows, I believe in the past too, right? Uh, well, so she's or been, uh, she's working production design okay. and set design and, and she's, you know, she worked on a short film that went to, she was art director for a short film that went, or actually for a feature that went to Sundance 2017 called It Happened in LA. It was produced by Yorma Tacone from Lonely Island um, and features uh, Dree Hemingway as well. Uh, and is and she just wrapped up uh, two seasons on how to get away with murder in the art department. So um, oh, that's cool. our, our our films, you know, she was the executive producer on this one, um, and I and I would really say our our films, um, they really represent kind of this combination of kind of like my writing ability, but like her visual style and taste, and I think that's kind of what sets apart the work that we do with Cosmic Otter. You know, there's kind of like a, a melding of of minds. Uh, that kind of help bring these like yeah, I was gonna ask what a unique name for a production company <laughs> yeah well it kind of comes from it actually comes out of our our vows I, I like I love the ideas of like otters and their relationship with each other and like yeah. holding hands on the ocean and I said something really like existential about us being like you know cosmic otters like floating on the oceans of time together holding hands and so when we were thinking about what we should call a production company like cosmic otter was like yeah let's like do that that feels right that feels like us I love it. All right. So um, what's the latest for this? Are you going to be spinning this like film festivals or where can people check out Rude Boy's restaurant? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're lucky enough that uh, the film made it into the Emerging Directors Showcase for the American Black Film Festival, which is going to be happening uh, this August. So um, if you go to the AmericanBlackFilmFestival.com, you'll be able to find updates on um, where the film will be showing um, because obviously we can't join together because of the current circumstances. Yeah. Um, it's going to be online, but it's going to be really cool. And there's going to be a bunch of other really strong films from uh, black filmmakers uh, there as well. And uh, we've got some other, um, we just learned about a couple of other festivals and things that we can't really talk about yet, but I think we're going to have a really strong um, second half of the year of uh, getting the film uh, in front of people. So, yeah. And then also, you know, you can um, like follow us or follow me for any updates. Um, Philip underscore Yao on Instagram. You can uh, learn about upcoming projects we have, you know, hear things about what's going on, any press that we're doing. Um, and that's P-H-I-L-I-P-P -P -P underscore Y-A-W. And uh, CosmicGotterProductions.com. Yeah, exactly. CosmicGotterProductions.com as well. You can learn more about what we got in the tank. Well, thank you so much, man. I can't wait to see what, uh, what more stuff you got down the road. You're so very talented. Absolutely, man. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. This is a real pleasure. All right, man. Take care. All right. Take it easy.